uh, not just 40,000, but maybe two, three, four times that amount per year in inspections. Um, so I'm surprised that some of the newer guys aren't here, but uh, I think we might be able to take one or two things we're talking about today, and it might help uh, fill your schedule in the next year, and it might be worth your while. Um, basically, I'm just going to tell you what I did. Um, and what worked for me, and you guys might have some input on what's worked for you, it might be completely different, and we can talk about that toward the end. But when we talk about your online presence, I'm just talking about uh, stuff that you've got out there online that could potentially result in someone picking up the phone and calling your number and booking an inspection. And so we'll cover some different areas that are included in that. I picked uh, 40,000 because that was just a number that uh, I think roughly about what I'll do probably off of online leads this year. And uh, I think about we're on track to do about 80 inspections this year from folks who were not referred by realtors, not referred by a friend, not repeat customers, just people that saw us somewhere on the internet, picked up the phone and called. And so 80 inspections is enough to live on, but it's not nothing to sneeze at either, I guess. So um, do about $500 inspection, I guess, uh, $40,000. And then the key thing here is free. Anybody can go out and pay Google AdWords and generate business that way. Um, you can pay for advertising on all sorts of sites. If you've been around for more than a minute, you probably got people calling you every day of the week trying to sell you stuff, whether it's Yelp or I wish they'd stop calling me, that's for sure. I, I yell at them every other day, it seems like. But uh, you get people calling you all the time trying to get you to pay for a listing online. Oh, we'll bump you to the top. We'll do this, we'll do that. So there's all sorts of those ways. Some of those are legitimate. Some of those will re bring revenue in. But all the stuff I'm talking about today doesn't cost anything. That's the difference. Uh, all this stuff can be done by free, and, and uh, that still generate a good bit of money for you. And basically, just three areas I want to talk about. One, your website. Two, social media. And then uh, we'll probably do business listings second, actually, and then social media third. And like I said, uh, you might pick up a few things on just one of these areas, make some changes, and it starts getting your phone ringing. Uh, if you do all three, these are just kind of the three areas I've focused on, and it's provided quite a bit of revenue. And uh, to be honest with you, while I was putting together this presentation, like all of you probably, I've been slap busy since last January, and uh, I hadn't been keeping up with stuff on the online side of it as quite as good as I should. So I got a big long list of stuff I need to go back and do a little more work on after I was looking through stuff, put together this presentation. I'm just saying that because the numbers, 40,000, I think could have doubled this year if I just kept up with the simple stuff that I've been doing two years ago. I moved location of my office last year and that hurt me on the uh, rankings on search engines because I had essentially appeared to Google as two different businesses when it was really just one, but my address was on one on one, and different on the other listing. So Google, my, if you look at the metrics, uh, about three or four months after that move, my volume went way down as far as number of people visiting my website, number of people calling me, all that. And it was just because I didn't take the time to get everything switched over online like I should have. But uh, there's a lot of potential there. Let's start with your website. Hopefully. Uh, you got a website. Now, let's talk about four steps here. First of all, if you don't have a website, you need to get a website. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Wix and WordPress and some of those today. I think that might have got scratched from the schedule. But um, you don't necessarily have to pay someone 1200 bucks to build your website. I just went on Wix and built mine. That's what I used. And uh, didn't. there's nothing fancy. Um, but make sure you got a website. And then also, this is real important for Google. Uh, make sure it's mobile optimized. If you have no idea what that means, then your site probably may not be mobile optimized. Uh, that just means you want to be able to look right when someone whips out their iPhone and does a search. You don't want to come up with a big garbled mess on a phone because the phone uses a different uh, process to look at websites than a desktop computer or laptop computer does. And so uh, on Wix or WordPress, a lot of the sites that people use to build their you can go in, you can edit your mobile version of your site different from your desktop version. If you don't know about this, what I'm talking about, uh, you need to make sure your mobile version looks right. If you're, if you're the type of guy that's always on your laptop, you're not really looking up 
internet sites on your phone a whole lot, and you haven't looked yours up on your phone, do that. And make sure it actually looks decent. People can find the information they need. That's really important. Google uh, made a big change that about 16 months ago to where they will penalize you in the search rankings if your site is not mobile optimized. So that's really important. So you can do that just by going on using Wix or what WordPress? Yeah, so uh, like uh, who are you using for your website right now? Like, do you have a website? Yeah, I do my own. You do your own? Is it just HTML based? Or? Okay. Um, that's a different conversation. If you so you built it, you know how to code and all that. Uh, I use Dreamweaver. That Dreamweaver. Okay. Does. <laughs> yes. You can either use code or not. Yeah, code. yeah. Okay. Um, so I know Dreamweaver a little bit, but I'm not as familiar with that. But there is a way to make sure it's mobile optimized with that software. I believe so, uh, unless I'm, I'm mistaken. But uh, any software you're using to build a website now should have, unless it's just a really outdated version, should have built-in capabilities to ensure that your site is mobile optimized. If not, then it's an old version of the software and you need to upgrade, because um, that's become very important. Uh, so this is just like part of my website. I just threw it up here to show you kind of what I did on Wix. Nothing fancy, like I said. But uh, I did want to show you this, though. And then that's how it looks like on the phone. That's a mobile optimized version of the site. Someone whips out their iPhone. That's what it looks like. Basically the same thing. I wanted to try and keep, create consistency in the look. And uh, people can find what it looks like right there. Um, so first of all, get a website. Make sure it's op mobile optimized. Secondly, secondly, you want to make sure that your site is optimized for keywords. When I say keywords, I'm talking about what are people typing in when they, their realtor says, you need a home inspection? And they say, oh, I've got seven days now, which I don't know why anybody's doing seven day due diligence. This is driving me insane. But uh, I got seven days, oh, I got to find a home inspector. And they get their phone out and they start typing in. What are they typing in to find you on the web? That's really important. You might think, well, uh, I just need to put home inspection up there or something like that. And as long as those words are on my site, then I'm good. Well, maybe, maybe not. There's ways to target specific areas or specific aspects of the inspection industry based on what words are on your site. Um, and it would be good to know throughout Atlanta what are the most popular search terms. That would be something important for you to know. Um, you know, I, you can go in, I could go on your website and find out your there's software that lets me go on anyone's website and figure out what your search is. Yeah, so he's, he's bringing up a good point. There's free websites, software, or, or you can use a, a site online <coughs> that allows you pretty much to go, well, we could use Keystone Home Inspection. Now, the guy who owns Keystone is not a guy member, I don't believe. But uh, Keystone Home Inspections pretty much dominates on the web in Atlanta. Uh, that guy, I don't know how much money a year he's making off of online, but he could probably keep a huge multi-inspector firm busy just off of his online leads because he kills it online. Uh, but you, there's software you could get or sites you can visit that will allow you essentially to, uh, the word spy, I guess, is not a really good term, but essentially spy on his site, see what keywords he's using. You can see, uh, we're going to talk about backlinks in a minute, like other sites that are linked to his site, and that helps you get a higher ranking on Google. You can spy on all the sites that are linking to his site and then go to those sites and try and get them linked to yours. I mean, there's all sorts of, there's a big game out there that you can play in this, but uh, you're exactly right. You can, you can see what's working for other people and, and copy that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like a it's copyright or anything like that. Um, but what are people typing into Google? That's, that's important. And uh, so, some of these are uh, not rocket science, but maybe I'll show you here the top three in Atlanta. But real quick, what do you think people are typing in? Just home inspector. Just home inspector. Yeah. Home inspector Atlanta. Home inspector Atlanta. That's probably a pretty good phrase. Uh, that's the number one search term people use in Atlanta when they need a home inspector right there. In that order. Home inspection Atlanta. Uh, so on my website, I want to make sure that phrase is showing up. And uh, when you're getting into building a website, it's not just the text on the page, but then <coughs> there's uh, things called headers. Um, 
I don't want to get too deep and technical in here, but if you're using Wix, this is all pretty basic and easy to find. But you might want to make that a header on your main page or something like that, showing up pretty prominently. So that that search engine is seeing that phrase, home inspector in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, home inspections, Atlanta, little variations on the same theme. But generally, if you're going along those that, that thread right there, that's what most people are using to find inspectors. So you want to make sure those words are showing up in, in approximately those orders on your, on your website. New construction, a little different. Some of you might say, oh, I don't like doing those 80-year-old uh, homes down in Decatur. Those reports are too long and I'm tired of staying up so late at night. I want to do more new construction. Um, what do you think people are using to find new construction inspectors? Cabo inspector. Cable. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've got realtors that say, are you Cable certified? I'm like, yeah, send builder's contract still says Cabo inspector. Cable inspector. DR Horton is home inspector on or something or their name up. You put it in brackets. Yeah, so just new construction inspection. That's the number one search term people are using uh, to find someone to inspect a new house. They're, the listing agent, on-site agent, calls me and says, Builder said you have to have your frame inspection done in the next three days. <laughs> and they're panicking and they're calling around and they're saying, oh man, i got to find someone to get out there quick. Yep. And if you're using AdWord or whatever, you want to <coughs> brackets because it could be looking, pull up this construction and you might be paying for that. Or... Yeah, so AdWords is a whole, whew, that's, a, that's a rodeo in and of itself right there. But yeah, you're right. Um, you want to make sure if you're using Google AdWords, you're not getting charged when someone's looking for a contractor to come out and work on their house. You want that whole phrase to come up. Yes, exactly. And uh, so if you are doing Google AdWords, there's ways you can ensure that you're only getting charged for when that phrase comes and not just part of it. That's very important. I'm not, I fooled around with Google AdWords for like one week, spent a lot of money, didn't get any inspections, and said, forget that. So. There's, a, there's people making a lot of money off that. Uh, all the big boys in the Atlanta market, the Amerispecs, uh, they're, they're dropping a lot of money on those Google AdWords. And they got 17, 20 inspectors on staff to keep busy, and they got to keep the schedule full. But uh, that's a rodeo I haven't really joined in on. Um, but um, yeah, new construction, home inspection, home inspection, new construction, just kind of the same, same words, different order. But uh, that's kind of what people are using. Uh, top three right there based on the keyword research I've done. So if you want to be doing new construction, you might want to have something like that, not just home inspection, but new construction inspection like that on your website. All right, you, got, you need a website, you need to have some keywords on that website that people are actually using to find home inspectors. And then uh, third, you want some backlinks. Backlinks, like I said, are just other websites that link to your website. Google likes this. Um, they like it not just when it's some random site that nobody cares about, but when it's a site that has what we call domain authority, which means uh, it's an important site. Uh, if you want 100 on domain authority, you're talking about sites like Amazon, eBay. These are the big, big giants on, on the internet, right? Uh, Amazon and eBay aren't linking to your website. I mean, nobody cares about that. But, uh, but you want to think about other sites that could be linking there. And so... Um, what you probably want to do is, I'm going to show you at the end a site you can order services off of, but I said for free, you can do this for free. You can Google and say how to create backlinks for my website. And there will be all sorts of blog posts that come up that teach you. Well, here's a list of sites you can go to and you can post on these sites and it will link to your site for free. And you can do that work yourself. I did a lot of it myself. I spent, uh, when I was first starting out, spent a couple days fooling around with it and uh, created uh, several uh, probably a couple, a couple hundred backlinks that all go to my site. Um, you could also pay someone to do this relatively cheap. Um, I'll show you how to do that at the end. But uh, the, the goal, though, is to get other sites linking to your site. That guy, Keystone, I told you, is cleaning up. I think uh, he has about 260, 270 legitimate sites linking to his site. And because of that, Google really likes them. And so he search, put in any of those search terms. Uh, that we just looked at, he's coming up number one or two on Google anywhere in Atlanta if you're searching. So uh, he's just got a lot of, 260 legitimate backlinks is a lot. Um, 
Yep. Are these backlinks like listing, like some of these obscure uh, business listings, or is this like the Georgia Association of Home Inspectors? Yep. So that's that's a great question. Yep. So Georgia Association of Home Inspectors does count as a backlink for you. Right now, if I do, a, uh, there's different services that you can use online. Um, I'll show you one in a minute called White Spark that I'm a big fan of. But you can run a search on your website and it will show you right now, today, what sites are linked to your site. What backlinks are out there on the web to your website today. <coughs> and uh, if I do that on my site, Gahi is one of those. Um, Gahi is a, counts as a backlink for me. It's another site linking to my site. Uh, yellowpages.com has a lot of domain authority, which is odd because I don't think anybody uses Yellow Pages, you wouldn't think. But uh, you can create a free listing on there for your business with a link to your website, and then that will count as a backlink. Another site linking to your site, and they have really good domain authority. They're a, a powerhouse in the SEO online world. Um, and if you, like I said, you start Googling around and you find people who have blog posts on this, you could find thousands of sites where you can create listings. Now, some of those are not going to have really good domain authority. In other words, they're, Google's going to look at them and be like, that site's not really that important. And so they're not really going to be worth your time. But some of them uh, certainly will. And uh, we're going to talk about business listings in a minute, uh, Russell. And uh, some of those will count as backlinks for you too. When you get your site listed on business listing sites, those can help you on your backlinks site. Um, yeah, good. Did you, what was the name of the site you can go to that will tell you what your backlinks are? Did you name one? Well, there's several of uh, them. I think there's a, there used to be a couple of free ones out there. Now, most of them will show you like the first. 20 backlinks you have, and then after that, they want you to pay them a couple bucks to get the rest of the list. Might be three or four dollars, something like that. Okay. Um, but there's dozens of sites, <coughs> excuse me, out there. Uh, White Spark is a company that offers all sorts of backlink resources. They're one of the sites you can use to look at your competitor and say, what, all, what backlinks do they have? And then they have, they'll create a list of all those for your competitor and then say, click here to make your own backlink off of this site. And uh, make, it brings a lot of efficiency to the process and speeds it up so you're not having to Google all over <coughs> God's green earth trying to find stuff. Um, and that might cost you about 20 bucks or something like that, 30 bucks, something like that. Um, so not quite free, but minimal cost for sure. Um, I think this has changed a little bit, but for a long time, Google really prioritize anything that was off of like a EDU site, so like an educational site. So you got like .com is commercial, um, .edu is an educational site. So if you had like a, let's say maybe someone posted a, an, an academic paper or something like that, but then the comments were open below, you go in there and be like, oh, this is a great paper. I, this is applicable to me and my home inspection business at adeaseinspections.net. Uh, then that would create, <laughs> in that comments, Google would, through as they're combing the internet, they would see that, see the link off of that EDU site going back to your site, and they would bump you up in the rankings for that. Um, the, Google updates their algorithm about every 18 months. Of course, they're updating it every day, but there's significant changes about every 18 months. So the whole game in the internet world changes about every 18 months. What you've been doing for the last 18 months may or may not have any effect on you 18 months from now. Because uh, Google changes everything, and you're like, Dad, gum it, gotta go back to the drawing board and start over now. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're gonna drop, it just means like to stay in the game, you gotta keep revisiting it. Um, and so the EDU backlinks I, I have dropped in a their algorithm and, and not quite as valuable as they used to be. <coughs> that being said, I've got a bunch of those and they do help me on my site. Um, moving on, backlinks just um, so link from the other site. All right, okay, here we go. There's the White Spark. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself here. Um, Whitespark.ca. Their CA is in Canada. They're up in Canada, but they're 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 a good company and I think they're worth paying a few bucks to. Uh, you can find a lot of resources up there, or you can pay them. I think they charge 100 bucks or 200 bucks. They have different price points, and they'll create all the backlinks for you. Um, if you want to spend a little bit more money, um, 
and they have different price points based on hey for these 20 sites it's 100 bucks if you want 50 sites it's 200 bucks and they'll do all the work for you as well they're they're a legitimate company out there in this arena uh, we talk about researching your competitor go to this site find a list it. all right we covered all this already um, all right, so we're still on website, right? Get your website, optimize for keywords, create some backlinks, and then, this is something I've not done that good a job on, uh, a blog, nobody has time to blog, right? We're all writing reports at night till 1 a.m. But uh, if you make some time to blog, uh, the Atlanta market is ripe for someone to dominate it with a really good home inspection blog. Um, there are some other markets, big markets in the United States, that have inspectors that have just dominated online in their city just through blogging. Um, let me give you an example of that. Some of you might know Ruben Saltzman, does that name ring a? If you're online and you're Googling around for stuff, you'll run across stuff from his blog. Because it shows up down here in Georgia all the time. Uh, anything from CSS, bonding on CSST or anything like that, I mean, he's usually showing up on page one of Google for one of his blog posts. Uh, it was him and his dad 12 years ago. He started blogging. Now he's got, I think, 18 inspectors. He's in Minneapolis and he dominates that market. Doesn't pay for any advertising. Has built an inspection empire up there and dominates the entire city just through blogging. And he's a sharp cat, too. I mean, he's, he's real sharp. Um, super high standards that you don't usually see on a multi inspector company. But, uh, but uh, he just. I think the last time I checked, he's got probably 600 blog posts up that he's done over the last 10 years. And uh, they're all quality stuff, good, in, good technical information. And uh, there's another guy out in Washington State, uh, Charles Buell. I don't know if you know him. If you're on any of the uh, Facebook inspectors groups, some of you don't care a lick about Facebook, um, there's two or three pretty big inspectors groups on Facebook, two, 3,000 inspectors in a group, and they're constantly bouncing ideas off each other, asking for feedback, that sort of stuff, and they can be a really valuable resource, but uh, Charles Buell is kind of a godfather in those groups. He's <laughs> kind of seen as an authority on all things home inspection related across the country in these groups, and uh, he has a blog, and he's never done advertising really a day in his life, but uh, he's just stays busier than he wants to be just through his blog. Um, so. There's no one in Atlanta that I know of that is consistently blogging good content in the home inspection industry. And if someone did that, if I had time to do it, <laughs> I would. Um, so try to figure out a way to make that happen. But I think someone could really clean up in, in the Atlanta market by doing that. Uh, Google loves original content. And if you got um, original content going up regularly on your site through your blog, that will aggregate over time and you'll start moving up the rankings. There's no doubt. So, um, those are four, th four suggestions on just how to make your website show up on the first page of Google. Um, we'll see here in a minute, I think we can get down below, but when people search, the latest update from Google, heavily weighted geographic proximity. In other words, uh, if you're down here in Tucker and you're searching for a home inspector, you're not finding me. I'm up in camp. <laughs> Google will show you, most likely, first other inspectors here pretty close to inside the perimeter, close to Tucker. Uh, but if you're anywhere up in uh, North Marietta through uh, North Canton, um, maybe from coming over to Bartow, and you search any of those key terms, I'll be number one or two on Google. Uh, and it's just by doing this stuff right here at my website. So. That's why I get uh, at least one or two inspections every week. That book, I turn away a lot of folks, but uh, one or two inspections a week that I book just off of Google. All right, so we're going back to our little uh, graphic here. We got website, social media, and let's move to business listings. We touched on this a little bit. Some of us are familiar with some of the bigger online business directories Angie's List, Kudzu, Yelp, all these, right? Uh, now, all these are going to try and sell you stuff, right? Uh, they're going to. Make your phone ring and annoy the crap out of you. Um, but you don't have to pay anything to create a business listing on there. Um, you don't have to be a member of Angie's List. Angie's List just changed the way they do everything. It used to be paid, subscription, all this. They just changed all that. But uh, even before, you didn't have to 
actually pay any of these companies anything to create a business listing on there. They're going to try and get you to pay to bump it up, but you don't have to do that. Um, and so these are probably the most three most popular ones here in Atlanta. And there are some guys that uh, are hard to compete with on these sites. Um, let's see. Some of you always know Medallion. Guys up in, uh, I guess they're up toward Cumming. Uh, good, pretty good guys up there. Um, met them once or twice. But uh, they're members here. They are members? Okay, good. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know. Um, but they've uh, put a little attention into their listing here on Kudzu. If you see there, it shows how many reviews they have. 398 reviews on Kudzu. Uh, if you're starting out in the industry or starting to think about how to create an online presence, 398 is a lot to compete with. <laughs> it's going to take you a while to get up to 398 reviews to where when someone's searching on Kudzu or just in Google and Kudzu's results are showing up there, you're probably not going to get up to compete with them for a while. Um, that's a lot. Now that generates a ton of business for them, I can guarantee that. Uh, those 398 reviews, I don't know what the price tag would be on that, but it's tens and tens of thousands of dollars to you, hands down. Um, let's see. Wrote most of those. Kind of the same thing with Yelp though, except for here's the deal with Yelp. I think this is one of the, com I did some search around and when I type in up near Woodstock, when I type in home inspectors on Yelp, I looked for the top rated, home inspectors, see who had the most reviews, and uh, this company came up and they had 45 reviews. That's a lot on Yelp because Yelp, just because someone leaves you a review on Yelp, Yelp doesn't necessarily post it. They got their own algorithm that goes through all the text and they pick and choose which reviews they want to let get up on your site or not. So you might have three people leave your review and only one gets left up on your Yelp page. Uh, so it's a little bit annoying. So 45 is a good number, but you can compete with that. You stuck at it and you started uh, having a system in place to where every inspection you did is to send a follow-up email to the client and said, hey, if you're happy with my service and the report, would you mind leaving me a review on Yelp? In, a, in probably a year, maybe a year and a half, you could take over that top spot and have probably more than 45 reviews. And you could start generating a lot of them. I do probably uh, two inspections a month from customers off of Yelp. Um, Probably something like that. I don't spend a whole lot of time focusing on that because uh, I get a lot of calls from inside the perimeter for people that found me on Yelp, and I don't like coming down inside the perimeter. So I generally turn away. But I'm pointing this out to just show you that uh, there's different, you got to figure out where can I go after an area and try to dominate it. That's what you want to do. You're probably not dominating on codes. 400 reviews is a little value leak. Someone in this room, if they really put their mind to it and got a good system in place, could start dominating on Yelp in Atlanta, and you could generate a lot of money. Yeah? So how do you get the folks to leave you the reviews? Is it just through email? Yeah, so I use, uh, I use ISN. I don't know if you all know Inspector Support Network. It's a software program which handles all my scheduling for my inspections. It also handles all my email communication with the client, so I have pre written emails that go say, hey, you can schedule this inspection, here's a link to inspection agreement, yada, yada. Uh, as reminders, your inspection is coming up tomorrow at 9 a.m., just want to remind you. And also, three days after the inspection, does what I just said. As their email goes out, says, hey, we hope you're happy with our services. Um, if you were, would you mind leaving a review on one of these three sites? Here's a link to Google, Facebook, and Yelp. Some people don't use Google. They're not going to create a login for Google just to go leave me a site, a review. That's what Google requires. You have to have a Google username and password and all that. Some people don't like Google, so they're not going to go create that. Same with Facebook. Some people are never on Facebook. But, especially the younger folks, they're on Yelp. They use Yelp for everything. Find a dentist, find everything on Yelp. Home inspector. Uh, and so, if the client was under the age of 30, there's a good chance they might go leave me a review on Yelp. But that email goes out to every single client. And uh, so you say, not everybody's going to leave a review, right? A lot of people are busy. We all get those emails sometimes. You go to get your car serviced. Maybe it says, hey, would you mind leaving us a review or take this survey? Most of the time, I'm too busy. Like, I'm not doing that. But uh, if that's going out 400 times a year to 400 clients this year, you say maybe one out of every four leaves a review. Well, I just got an extra 100 reviews this year. It didn't, wasn't a lick of work on my part. I didn't do anything. It's all a system in place. 
that hundred re extra hundred reviews, uh, that'll probably equate into an additional fifteen thousand dollars next year. It didn't 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 take me a minute of time to do it. So the system having a system in place is really important uh, for reviews. Google loves reviews. Um, the latest algorithm that came out with Google started weighting reviews way heavier than previously. So I'm going to show you something a little bit here about that. So let's keep moving. All right. So we're talking about business listings. Um, how We talked about what people are searching in to look for a home inspector, but let's think for a second about how do people look for a home inspector online. When I say how, I'm talking about they used to use the left, and now more and more folks are using the right, right? Uh, it used to be you'd be sitting at your desk typing stuff in. Maybe a lot of you still do that, but increasingly, more and more people in Atlanta are on the thing on the right six, seven, eight hours a day. I mean, they go, they're on it at work when they should be working. They're still just fooling around their phones. We see it everywhere we're at, right? And so I started thinking, all right, when someone says, uh, honey, have you scheduled the home inspection? And the guy reaches back, oh crap. <laughs> and he reaches in and pulls out his phone and starts typing in, I want to know where he's doing and how, what he's typing in and what he's using to find that home inspector. Well, Google recently paid Apple $1 billion to make sure that Google will be the default search engine on every iPhone in the world for the next four or five years. So Bing is okay, Yahoo's okay, all these other search engines are okay, but if Google is locked in on every iPhone in the world for the next four or five years, I want to make sure I'm dominating on Google, all right? And particularly, I want to dominate on iPhones on Google because different stuff works differently versus desktop and <coughs> mobile versions and all that. So right now, if you were in my area, Canton, Woodstock, something like that, you typed in home inspection, home inspection Atlanta, whatever, any of those search terms we looked at, this is what would pop up on your phone, your iPhone, if you're using an iPhone. Uh, Google's gone to using this. It's a map. It has the top couple listings on that map. You've probably seen this if you've been searching for sites on your iPhone. So this is what anybody in my area is going to see on their iPhone when they type in home inspection. And I said, all right, how can I make sure I'm at the top of that list? Get a lot of Google reviews. That's what I want. I want to have a business listing on Google. I want to have a lot of reviews on there. I want to be good reviews. And I want to dominate when someone pulls out an iPhone and searches home inspection in my area. And, uh, and I do. I get, I'd say my, my website gets me some leads, but this is where probably 80% of my online business comes from. People pulling out an iPhone, typing it in, I show up on that little map, and they see 90 reviews, 90 five-star reviews. And they go, they call me and say, you have incredible online reviews. I want to use you for my home inspection. I have to sell it. So that's what you, now here's the thing. I started working on this a little bit ago. It took me about two years to get to 90 reviews. All those other guys, they're going after Kudzu and Angie's List, so there's a lot of competition there. In your area, I, look, I Googled around in different areas, the Pula, Stone Mountain, Lawrence, all these areas. Uh, there's very few inspectors that have more than like 15 reviews on Google. Uh, you could dominate your local market, most likely, on Google if you started getting Google reviews. Because um, there's not a lot of people thinking about this in the inspection industry. They're thinking about the Angie's lists and the Kudzu's and stuff like that, Yelp's. Um, but this will generate you a ton of business if you start getting Google reviews and you start showing up on this map with a bunch of reviews right there. Um, You're on 24 hours? Oh yeah. <laughs> 24 hours. And uh, there's a lot of realtors that take that li literally, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I get texts at 12.30 a.m., middle of the night. Got an Any openings tomorrow? No, no openings on Mark. <laughs> um, so I just talked about this. All the major search engines, not just Google, but all of them, are beginning to give more weight to online reviews. So reviews are important. Here's a good example. Some of you might know Scott Dana over there in Alpharetta, Roswell area. Uh, he's killing it with reviews online. He does a real good job. But uh, what I want to point out is something... I don't know about the pointer, but right down here, this is something Google just started doing. Not just showing your Google reviews that were given on your Google business listing, but Google is now combing the web 
get a little closer on this, and doing reviews from around the web. So when you search, let's go back here. When you search, they're putting a little bar for your company. Like if you search Dana Home Inspections, this is what comes up. They have a little feature for you over on the side. And then they comb the web to look for other reviews. And they tell the person who's looking, uh, not just how many Google reviews, but here's his other reviews around the web as well. So that's a nice little feature Google started to do. So it's just highlighting that uh, he has 578 reviews there. Uh, total. He's killing it. But uh, just the importance of getting those reviews. All right, so we've talked about website, we've talked about business listings. Let's talk a little about social media. Um, I think you need to have a real clear goal if you're going to fool around with social media. Now, if you're just like looking at pictures of people's cats and grandkids and whatever, that's fine. But uh, if you're going to use it for business, you need to have like a real clear goal. Uh, I see a lot of guys just kind of post some random stuff all the time, and that's fine. You can do that, but if you want results, I would suggest thinking of a couple things. Um, this is a little poll we did earlier this week here at Gahi. It said, how much do you feel social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc., help your business? Uh, one third of us said, I don't know because I don't use it. 45% uh, said it seems to help somewhat, and 20% said it seems to help quite a bit. So there's five of us that seem like they're really using it a lot. And I think the fourth category, if there's people that skip the question. But uh, so anyway, uh, social media platforms. We're talking about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and uh, we keep going on and on, right? There's like a new one that starts every week. It can be overwhelming. Um, so I think you need to have clear goals and pick a couple of sites that you're going to really focus on. I've got two purposes for social media that I focus on. Uh, one is, my most important one, build and maintain relationships with realtors. I don't care about customers seeing me on social media. I care about realtors on social media. Uh, I go the, try to be on the opposite end from the stocky guy, right? The guy that's like, you meet him one time and they're getting a Facebook request like three seconds later, like that's not good in my opinion. But uh, if I've met a realtor, I've worked with him a couple times, They've gotten to know me a little bit. Maybe I've seen them at one of the realtor events that, with our uh, Cherokee Realtors Association, that sort of thing. Then I don't hesitate to reach out and uh, connect with them on Facebook or Instagram. A lot of the younger ones are on Instagram now. And, uh, and then they're going to start seeing when I'm posting on Facebook or Instagram regularly. And it's going to remind me, oh yeah, there's that John guy. He seemed like a pretty good home inspector. And... Uh, start to build credibility through these platforms with the realtors. Uh, second purpose, and this is secondary, is just to remind everyone that I know online about what I do, right? Uh, we all have, maybe some of you have a few friends, but on Facebook, I probably got, I'm not, I got friends that have like 5,000 friends on Facebook, all right? That's not me. I've got a couple hundred people I'm connected with on there probably. But uh, I want, those couple hundred people in the metro Atlanta area to be reminded on a regular basis, oh yeah, I know a home inspector. When they're a realtor, they're buying a house and the realtor says, Here, here's the guy on my list. I want to think, wait, no, I already know somebody. John, he's, he's, my, he's my friend on Facebook. He's a home inspector. I've seen all the stuff he's been posting. I want to use him, not your guy. Uh, that's my secondary goal. So those are the only two goals I have for social media. Yep. But your Facebook account is your company. It's not your personal one you're talking about. Hmm. That's a good question there. Um, so you got to make a decision on that. Um, I have a business and a personal. I if I had more time and I was doing it right, I would be getting putting a lot more effort into the business one because that's more valuable long term, right? If I ever want to sell the business, I can sell the business Facebook page along with the business. It doesn't. It's not dependent on me. Yep. The thing is, though, you have to have a personal Facebook page to have a business. Account. That, that is correct. That is linked to your personal one. Yeah, so you cannot completely, uh, you can't yeah, separate the yeah, you're right. Okay. So then you get all your friends that say, hey, look at my puppy that we bought last week, and your business clients can see that. <laughs> so you got to watch what your friends say. Yes, all family. right, so we're bringing up a lot of issues here. Um, so you are right, Bill. Uh, I said transfer. I'm not sure 100% you can transfer if you sold the business. I, what, you, what you'd have to do is that if you sold it, you'd have to have a person at the new company take over your yeah. personal one 
and then it would still be getting to a Okay, place. you probably know more about that because you just went through that. I'm thinking 20 years down the road. So <laughs> I'm sure you're the expert on that matter right now. Uh, we're bringing up issues here about what goes online. This is just an aside. I don't know if you, any of y'all saw this online, but uh, there's a very <laughs> prominent ashy home inspector that got slapped this week with a $300,000 lawsuit by the president of another home inspection company for allegedly demeaning uh, this other home inspection company's entrance exam test. He said, well, my grandma and my dog passed that test. On a comment on his own Facebook page, someone took a screenshot, sent it to the president of this other inspection, inspection uh, association and he filed a three hundred thousand dollar defamation suit against him. Yep, Mr. Garmico. He likes to file lawsuits. He loves filing lawsuits. But uh, so just be careful what you're posting out there because now it's gotten the day. Uh, there's a lot of guys that talk about this a lot, but anything that you get posted online, someone's taking a screenshot, send it to somebody, and uh, you can get get yourself in a heap of trouble real quick. So so. You just get your grandmother pass the test. Say, I told you she did it. <laughs> <laughs> that might be possible in that instance. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the dog. But, uh, so that's just a, an aside when we're talking about social media. When you want to divide, a, it's a little bit hard on Facebook to completely divide the business side and the personal side. To be honest with you, uh, I don't care about the personal side of Facebook that much. I use that mainly just to post pictures of crazy stuff I see during inspections and the realtors love it and all my friends love it and anytime I see anyone I can go to a family reunion and hadn't seen people in two years and the first thing they say when they walk in is I love all the stuff you post on Facebook about those crazy houses and uh, so everywhere I go that's what people comes out of their mouth. So that's the way I use it. If you want to use it mainly to post pictures of your grandkids you might not want to be connected with a lot of realtors. Use, uh, use Instagram instead or something. Uh, of course, Facebook is trying to get you to buy their stuff. Oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> There's uh, uh, confidentiality issues there. Right? Yes, that's correct. So those are my two goals right there. Build and maintain relationships with realtors. My people I know, the inspector, I'm at, we, Patrick and I were at a house the other day, and uh, the realtor came up at the end of the inspection and said, hey, you mind if I take a picture of you and uh, with picture with you and put it on my Facebook, I mean, on my Instagram page. And so she did a little post. At, with that ease inspections today, John Battaglia at this new construction house. And uh, so that sort of stuff's good. I mean, all the realtors in our office were liking that picture. Oh, that's cool. So now our name and face just got for all the other realtors in our office. So uh, there's some good good uh, opportunities there. So I talked about this. Uh, friend or follow realtors is what I try and do. Uh, post crazy finds. And then, uh, as Joe was saying, you don't want to be disclosing. I'm not... I'm not going to point out a defect in a house on Facebook and then allow anybody to know where that was at. Like, that's a confidentiality issue, right? Um, but uh, Facebook Live videos, let me talk about that real quick. If you have the Facebook app on your phone, the app has a feature to where you can essentially broadcast a live video in real time to everybody who's a friend with you on Facebook. It's a real simple to just swipe right and hit the button and you're on. You're broadcasting to the whole, uh, everybody you're connected with. I'll do this occasionally, not every day, but every now and then. So we did one last week. Um, we had just this shed out behind a house and the shed of course was stacked up on cinder box and stones and everything else and we about to slide off down the side of the hill. So I just did, uh, since right before Halloween, I just said a uh, scary shed is what I labeled it. And I just did a little Facebook live video real time. Like, hey folks, sometimes we get in these old sheds and we don't really want to open the door. We might find a dead body or something inside. But this one, uh, something scary around back. So I just walked around back and showed them how it was just kind of propped up. Look, it's about to slide down the hill. Real short. By the time I got done with that inspection, a couple hours later, uh, 150 people had watched that video. Um, by the time that week ended, about 300 people had watched that video. Uh, the reason for that is because when you do a Facebook Live video, it notifies everyone that you're connected with on Facebook at any point during that day, uh, say three hours later, John Battaglia was live earlier, and it puts it at the top of their feed. 
If you just post a picture, it gets buried in their feed. They might be following 100 cat sites or something. I don't know, like watching cats or something. But, uh, and it gets buried underneath all the other stuff, right? Just a regular photo does. But if you do a Facebook Live video, it automatically, the notification stays at the top of their feed and lets them know, hey, John did a live video earlier today. Click here to watch it. And uh, you get 300 people looking at that. That's a lot of people that, one, you can build credibility with. Hey, this guy's a, a sharp home inspector. I don't have to be too sharp to see a shed falling down the side of the hill. But, uh, but uh, build credibility. Just build familiarity. And they remember, hey, I know a home inspector. And the realtors love that junk. I mean, they, they're used to seeing crazy stuff all the time, so they love when we post stuff online. They, go, they get nuts over it. Um, yeah, so there was Scary Shed. And uh, that's what came up in people's feed. And uh, you can see 289 views there. So that's pretty good. I'll take that. LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, I got just one purpose for that. And I don't spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, but I do have a profile, as most of you probably do. And uh, you can post articles. You can write an article and post it on LinkedIn. And uh, so this is basically just like a glorified blog post is all it is. And uh, my goal with that is, one, once again, to create a sense of this guy really knows what he's doing with realtors that I've connected with on LinkedIn. Also, within the industry, I'm connected with engineers, uh, project managers, uh, builders, all sorts of stuff like that. Daniel Jewett, you guys know him, was real good about this. Uh, he had the credentials and stuff to back it up, for of course, but uh, he got a lot of business off of LinkedIn, just people wanting to find the best. So they start searching around LinkedIn. These are CEO types uh, looking for experts in fields. And, uh, yep. You know, I think Hank Spindler, who's a member here, probably does the best on LinkedIn. He's always on there, just like mm. posting. That's true. I've seen a lot of his stuff. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. He does a great job. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, check out, check out Hank's stuff on LinkedIn. That'd be great. But, uh, so I don't spend a lot of time, maybe once a month, I try and just do a little post. So here's a post I did. I just titled, Why These Buyers Blame the Realtor. I just told a story about how uh, I got a call for 11-month warranty inspection. And when I got there, they said, yeah, we bought this house 11 months ago, brand new, obviously. And our realtor never mentioned an inspection. We're from out of state. We thought the state actually inspected stuff here. We were from the West Coast. <laughs> we didn't know that we needed an inspection. We had no idea. And uh, so they were really uptight at the realtor for not mentioning that. Uh, well, another realtor that they had met in the meantime, since moving here to Georgia, said, oh, you need to get John to do an 11-month warranty inspection because they're having a lot of issues. Water coming in the basement, tons of code defects on the house that had gone un unnoticed. And uh, so I just wrote a little story about how they were real upset at the realtor, but then the other realtor who said, oh, you need an inspection on this new house became their best friend. They started referring work to her and like everything worked out great in the end. So it wasn't just a realtor bashing uh, story. It was a story about why realtors should be referring clients on new construction properties and not letting that slip under the rug. And uh, this got a lot of good traction on LinkedIn. A lot of people, well, you see, 95 people read it, so I'll take that. That's not bad. Um, but uh, that's how I use LinkedIn right there. All right, you're looking at all this, you're saying, man, I don't have time. I don't want to fool with all this crap we've been talking about today. Uh, there's a couple things that can help you out. There's a site called Fiverr.com. Uh, two R's on the end of Fiverr. Uh, this is a site where people offer uh, SEO, graphic design, all sorts of services that have to do with social media, anything online, basically, for really cheap prices. And so... Let's see if we can get a picture of it here. Yeah, something like this. So we talked about keyword research. I just typed that in. And so like this guy right here, he's saying, I will do keyword research and your competitor research for $5. This guy probably lives over in Pakistan somewhere, Philippines. Who knows? Five bucks goes a long way over there. Five bucks here, we're like, <laughs> but yeah, that's, a, that's a good bit of money to him. So he'll do that. I have used this quite a bit over the past couple years um, for all sorts of stuff that I don't have time to do. Um, whether it's creating, maybe you say, well, my website doesn't look real good. Get on Fiverr. 20 bucks, someone will come in and read your website for you. So what does the guy for $5 do differently than the guy for $400? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. You have to do a, you have to do, he probably, the guy for 400 So when this first started, everything was $5 uh, three or four years ago. Now, there's different levels and there's uh, 
pro levels, so there's some that are just yeah. There's some that are just aimed at corporations. Big, I mean, they're selling stuff to big, the big boys. Um, but I usually don't spend more than ten or twenty bucks for anything on there, and I've usually, with the exception maybe once or twice, been really happy with what I've got. And it's ten or twenty bucks if I'm not, so I'm not that worried about it. But uh, anything from keyword research to revamping your website to uh, people will create business listings, the people will create backlinks, people that will do a business card for you, anything. And uh, you just pay a pound of money, and <coughs> usually they'll turn around in a day or two. Uh, so this is those have, have ratings on them. Yeah, you want to use like these are. Uh, there's a place where you can go that says refine results by uh, ratings. So I usually I look for somebody like this. Like if I had my choice here, I probably wouldn't use this guy. He doesn't have any ratings. He's five dollars. This guy has 199 five star ratings. I know 200 people like. Them. I'll pay the extra five bucks for that. That's no big deal. Um, but yeah, but this is this can be one of your best friend right here. If you don't have time to do stuff, you're like, ooh, I like some of these ideas. I want to put them into place, but I don't have time. Uh, minimal, minimal money, you can get a lot of stuff done for you. So, um, Fiverr, so Fiverr can be a good friend. And then uh, you might want to use a social media management platform. You say, well, I'm going to be doing a lot on social media, but I want to start. But I don't have time to post on five different things. You can use something like Hootsuite. There's several sites like this, but they'll post. You create one thing. You take one picture, make a couple comments about something crazy you saw in a house. Post it on here, and they'll post it out to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, all at the same time. You could, you could sit down on Saturday, pull out a dozen pictures from the past year, and schedule them to go out, be posted on the first of each month for the next year. And it would go to all those sites on the first of the month. You don't have to worry about it the rest of the year. It's done. And do it all at once for the next month, two months, a year, whatever. Uh, so there's ways you can put systems into place to make this stuff happen if you want to, to where you're not having to worry about it all the time. That's the key. We're all too busy to do it on a daily basis usually. But uh, excuse me. Yes. How much do you think you're spending on in a month when you do all this? What kind of budget do you allocate in real dollars? Yeah. So. Uh, if you're talking about money, I don't spend anything. That's why the name of my presentation was how to create forty thousand dollars for free. Now, obviously, your time is money, right? Well, these sites, the the Fiverr and the Hootsuite. Yeah. I mean, when you go into those and you spend five bucks here and ten bucks there. Yeah, those are one-time expenses. So I haven't spent anything on Fiverr in nine months. I mean, I think last time I spent it was uh, I had a guy do some uh, tweaks on my. Google business listing and uh, I paid him five bucks to do a couple of things on there that I didn't have time for but but those aren't ongoing expenses like it's just when I have a service in particular that I want done so like I haven't spent anything on any of this in the last nine months yeah uh, lately uh, next to nothing I mean I might do a Facebook live video but that took me 30 seconds I mean uh, uh, most of these I try and get systematized because I don't have time. Uh, so I'm, I'm behind on some stuff. I told you that when I started researching all this, I'm like, ooh, there's some stuff I need to update. Uh, I mentioned moving locations and that kind of hurt me on my rankings and some stuff I need to go back in and, and fix. Uh, so at one point I need to take a morning probably to do that. But I haven't done anything with any of this uh, other than just posting stuff for Riddlers in probably the last nine months. I've got HomeGate just to get my website, and of course there, I'm going to optimize it, and they've been wearing me out about social media stuff. So I've got a LinkedIn account which has sat there for 10 years, not doing anything, and I got Google Plus, and I've got a um, Facebook, and what I do is fairly fast. If I do an inspection today, I might take a picture of the front of the house and make some comment about how nice it was, and and thank the, the agent who referred me and just I click and paste put on all three of them it takes me five minutes you yeah know? or if I find something defective I don't mention the house is in I'll say a friendly reminder for your do-it-yourselfers this is done wrong and and it's fairly fast I mean yeah so there's some guys I know uh, across the country but especially out in California who are doing that very thing and are just killing it. I mean though like you said take every inspection 
uh, for most of them anyway, they know the, the agent, they got a referral from the agent for the inspection. They take a picture of the front house, they inspect this beautiful house uh, in partnership with uh, Leanne Hathaway at Berkshire Properties and tag her on it. And they do that on every house in the river below it. Now I'd ask the realtor first before we start doing that, <laughs> just to make sure they're okay with it. But uh, there's some guys out in California that do that with every inspection. And they said, like, it's generated tons of realtor referrals just because it's cross marketing, right? You're helping to market the realtor. And they send you a referral. And they know, oh, this guy's going to help market me on social media. They love that. I, I've been trying, I've been meaning to do that for about the past year and a half. And uh, I always get to the house and start seeing stuff and forget about it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I started doing that and. Some agents just said, well, no, no, I don't yeah. need that. Yeah, I would talk to the agent. So, talk to the yeah. agent first. Don't yeah, do it without yeah. asking. Especially if the deal goes south. <laughs> yeah. right. There's there's some pros and cons to that. And there's uh, one reason I'm, I've done this guy in time, and I haven't thought through all the cons yet on that, too. But I think there's potential. Yeah, Russell. I'm wondering about posting pictures and posting live video, the ability of somebody to trace back and find the location you were Located. Yeah, so you got to be careful. Um, certainly, if you're posting the front of the house, you can do a Google search the front of any house, and it'll come up online. Because if Google can search by photos, it'll go through Zillow and Trulia, and it'll bring up that house instantly. So you got to be careful about the front of the house. Um, no, what I do is something wrong. I do this an independent post. It doesn't have anything. I don't mention an address or anything. I'm just yeah, yeah. I'm saying though, like if you, if I see that post, I can take that picture, copy it into Google, do a Google image search, and I can find the exact address in ten seconds. Like, well, but I, yeah, front, maybe yeah. it's front, I'm talking about a, a plumbing problem inside the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let know what's inside the house. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. even talking about that. Yeah. So there is. If I take a yeah. photograph, the geo data is there in the properties of the photograph. Yeah, right? you gotta be. Yeah. So at some point you got to say, all right, what's the liability there? Can, yeah. can someone from the NSA get on that picture and figure out exactly where you're at? <laughs> oh yeah, they can. <laughs> they know exactly where you're at right now too, and what we're yeah. saying in this room. So yeah. I mean, uh, so at some point you got to make a decision there. Some of you might say, I, I, based on your opinion, you feel like there's some liability there. Um, I'm willing to accept the liability for a leak and drain. I mean, how mad is someone going to be about that if? Someone in the SA finally traced it back to that house. Right. Yada yada. I mean, there's there's eventualities that could eventually play out, but the, I would say the liability is relatively limited, okay. from my perspective. But I'm not an internet security professional or nothing like that. So. Any other questions? We're we'll wrapping up. One thing I wanted to say for any inspector here that is a part of Gahi, you know, we do as Gahi has a presence with Facebook. I am happy to repost anything that you provide out there. I mean, I, for example, I pick up news feeds for anything that applies to a realtor or home inspector. And we've gotten lots of traction. I mean, I just posted something like the top seven things that a home inspector finds. You know, I had 200 views. So if you have anything that you find, a video, go live, anything like that, I'd be happy to repost it on your behalf so that anyone that sees what guy he sees, they see it through that as well. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Any other question? All right, I got uh, one request. Um, right now, I'm scheduled to start taking over some of the classes that Daniel Jewett was teaching for Atlanta Home Builders starting in the spring. And I'm going to do a class on exterior claddings and flashing. So I'm finding a ton of code issues on that, all the new construction I've been doing. And I feel like the builders could really use a class on that. If you got photos of crazy stuff you're seeing, on uh, final inspections on new construction, having to do with flashing, exterior cladding, signing any of that. If you wouldn't mind sending them my way, you can help me help the builders to maybe correct some of these things. <laughs> so we're not having to write them up on every house. So if you if you can do that over the next couple months, I would appreciate it. But uh, that's all I got. January, it's uh, actually...